Um, first, I'd like to start by thanking uh, the Center on Longevity and our, our friends there, and certainly our friends at Aging 2.0. Um, it's, it's our honor and pleasure to be here. Um, today at 4 o'clock, I had a meeting where I learned I was going to get to present in front of someone who had presented at TED. Um, so that was super. Um, uh, it, it then got worse, as you've seen from the rest of our presenters, that I get to follow them, and not the least of which uh, our largest customer in Brookdale. So this is all great. Um, you know how my day is going now. Um, you know, people have asked, why would, a, why would a distributor sponsor this? And at the end of the day, uh, it's because it matters. It just simply matters. It matters to our industry. It matters to me. It matters to the people in the room, um, and most of all, it matters to our community. Um, I think personally, and I, I think our, our CIO, Bill Avery, is here with me, he agrees we're at a, a huge inflection point right now where technology is going to impact the way we age in a magnificent way. Um, we've been in the industry for a long time. We're 27 years old from a, a company standpoint. We started as a distributor. We then moved into uh, an e-commerce platform that now does about $4 billion worth of transactions on an annual basis. Um, we then um, moved into a company that creates buildings and environments that hopefully change the way people age. We are creating skilled nursing facilities and building them from the ground up now with, with our customers. We don't run them, but with them, where we actually take them out of the ground. And I can tell you, uh, this is not what you think of when you think of skilled nursing. I, I had people in our office just last week, as Katie mentioned, that were about 80 of our largest operators. And when we showed them some of the, the drafts and some of the work that we had done, um, you know, hopefully this isn't being recorded, it may be. Um, one of our customers said, holy something, that's skilled nursing? And the answer was yes. We want to create environments that change the way people feel about where they are. We don't want an institutional feel. We want a look and feel that makes people feel good about where they are, even though they don't feel good physically. Um, that's what matters to us. That's, that's why we do what we do. Uh, we started as a traditional distributor, as I said, but ultimately we became a company that became an advocate for the industry. Uh, we raise millions of dollars every year for industry advocacy. We felt it was our place to do it. We had access to people that had the means, had the need, and ultimately um, we created access for this industry with this industry in Washington, D.C. Um, it's important. If you looked at, uh, you know, the the most recent um, Health Care Act, skilled nursing, assisted living was an afterthought, um, and I say that with all due respect, but it was not the largest contingent of end users of health care. We don't want skilled nursing, we don't want assisted living or independent living to be an afterthought. Um, our business is focused 100% on senior living. It has been for 27 years and in my estimation based on what my boss has told me um, it will be for the rest of time. Um, I don't think he's 65. I don't think he's planning to retire in the next 25 years so um, he's got control for a while. Um, this is a conference about entrepreneurship and a desi design challenge. We started our company 27 years ago. I was not there. I think I was in elementary school. Um, <laughs> middle school maybe. Um, but when our boss started it, uh, he didn't start it to get rich. Bluntly, he sort of already was. And he said, I want to build something that's sustainable. He said, I want to build something that matters, and I want it to last for a long time. And I want it to support generations of families. And that's just what he's done. Um, we are a culture shop. As I talked to Katie and, and some folks earlier today, our, our business is very much focused on culture. I think that there, and I grew up in Silicon Valley, uh, my, the start of my career was all Silicon Valley, and it was very interesting when I sat down with our CEO, I said, hey, what's the exit strategy? You know, because I've <laughs> got to know the exit strategy. And his response to me was, I don't know, I guess I'm going to die at some point in time. <laughs> and I, I thought about business very differently at that point in time. Um, I thought about businesses that sustained. I thought about businesses that did things better. And what I mean by that is, and, however you want to take it as social activism, et cetera, businesses that actually cared about their industry. 
Um, we are a business that cares about our industry. We're a business that wants to support our industry. And at the end of the day, sure, we make money, but we also believe that we make the industry a better place, and that is without question our focus. Um, you know, I, I echo my friend from Brookdale's comments about what an amazing group entrepreneurs are. Our CEO is an entrepreneur, I collect a check. Um, it's definitely a different mindset. Uh, our relationship with Stanford helps me dive a little bit into the relationships with, with, or with uh, entrepreneurs and into the mindset. But, you know, I, I'm going to close here quickly because I think we've, uh, we've I, I could spend all night, but I don't need to. Um, <laughs> You know, I wrote a couple of comments, and the comment that I wanted to finish with was, remember the work, you ha the work that you do has purpose if you decide to enter into this industry. Um, it's not a quick hit. It's a journey. Please build a company that's sustainable. At the same time, innovate, build products that matter, and focus, focus, focus on your core. Always focus on your core. But most importantly, take a real interest in the people, I'm sorry, in the industry and the people that you impact. Thank you.